for the most part, Medellin is safe. But if you make yourself an easy target, someone will find you eventually. The thief is always going to look for the easiest target. Someone who's not aware, someone who's just head in the clouds. A foreigner, you're gonna do very well on any dating app. Yep. That being said, you're gonna get some good girls and you're gonna get some bad girls. So you have to be able to distinguish the good girls and the bad girls. Sometimes you're not gonna be able to tell until you actually talk to them. Before I get to the safety tips, let's talk about some misconceptions. Colombia is the Wild West. You get held up, petty crime happening all the time. I've been here 13 years. Not once have I ever been robbed on the street. I've never been pickpocketed, knock on wood. <laughs> I've never been held up at gunpoint or knife point. I've lived in seven different neighborhoods and I lived a year and a half in downtown Medellin, probably the most dangerous place to be. But if you're not an idiot, you're not gonna get robbed. And I'm not saying that people that get robbed are idiots, but some people do some idiotic things to put themselves out there and make themselves a target. Many people ask me on my YouTube channel, is Medellin safe? I always say the same line. If you're educated to the dangers and you don't do stupid things, you'll be completely safe. Yeah. We're gonna talk about a couple of those things that people really should know. And the first one is if you know anything about Colombia, you've heard this phrase. No dar papaya. That basically translates to do not give papaya. The way that I would explain do not give papaya is don't make yourself an easy target. What is making yourself an easy target in Medellin? Out in the street with your $30,000 Rolex watch. Wearing Gucci this, Gucci that, everything Gucci. Yeah. And, and even like, yeah, Gucci down to the socks yeah. is, is definitely papaya, meaning making yourself a target. Not only making yourself a target, but making yourself an easy target. You're wearing your Rolex watch, rolling around with your bodyguard in Provenza, that's not an easy target. Even with your boys in Provenza, yeah, that's not a very easy target because in Provenza, the police presence is prominent. The chances that you're gonna get robbed in Provenza at night, you know, clubbing, wearing a Rolex watch are lower. But let's say you're wearing that same Rolex watch and you're walking from your hotel in El Poblado, broad daylight, all the way to, let's say, Santa Fe Mall, which could be a 20, 30 minute walk. That is making yourself not only a target, but making yourself an easy target because there is no police presence there. You have no recourse either if you do get robbed, how are you gonna go get a cop to chase the guy down? Yeah. That thing is lost. So that's what we mean when we say, don't give papaya. Don't make yourself a target, but don't make yourself an easy target. They take advantage of weakness. And that's what I saw when I lived in downtown. I never got robbed because robbers don't like a challenge. I don't wear any jewelry. That's just my style. I'm from Southern California. I don't wear anything. If I'm walking to the mall, and I have an iPhone, I'm not gonna do it at night or in the evening. In the daytime, you might be okay here in El Palau. Other areas are more dangerous, but that's what AK was talking about. Educating yourself about what areas you can do that in and what areas you shouldn't do that in. Robbers are going to come after the people who they can get the most value out of, you know? If I'm rolling around in shorts and a singlet, no one's gonna rob me because they're like, this guy's poorer than me. Yeah. But if they're seeing some guy, especially white, Americans, yeah. that's already a big flag of this guy has money. And you walk right. in like that with a lot of fancy things, even worse. So I'd, I'd tone that down when you're here. And honestly, that's gonna make you a lot less of a target. If you're going to like a private club or a nightclub in one of these nice areas and you're not a heavy drinker, you're not gonna blackout drink. Mm. You're pretty safe wearing the things that you would wear in the United States, taking your iPhone. But if you do get drunk, the chances of you getting pickpocketed coming out of Provenza at three o'clock in the morning onto the main road, Calle Diaz, are higher if you're drunk and you have a nice phone. So that's tip number one, don't give papaya. Tip number two is always be aware of your surroundings. This is kind of touching on the first one, but a thief is always gonna look for the easiest target, someone who's not aware, someone who's just head in the clouds. This whole thing of you walking with your cell phone in your hand and walking at the same time, that's over here. You don't do that. It seems stupid to me. Yeah, you like, just can't do it. It's can't. A, yeah, like don't, don't be dumb. And a lot of us have Google Maps and we're new to the place. So we want to see where we're going. Where's this code work? One way to do that, go into an establishment, whether it's a bank or a shopping center or something or a cafe, look at the map. Okay, I got to go left here. I got to go right there. Cool put it away, then go to the street. Don't just be standing in the street with the phone, new iPhone like this. Oh, I'm lost, where am I going? It's gonna get stolen. It's not that this is happening every single day to everybody here, it's not. For the most part, Medellin is safe. But like we said, if you make yourself an easy target, someone will find you eventually. So don't go out there with your cell phone out and stuff like that. This is not the US. The third big safety tip is probably something a lot of you have heard of, that is scopolamine. 
it's a trending topic. Petty crime is not very common as far as like pickpocketing or armed robberies. The likelihood of you getting robbed here or pickpocketed is lower, is, is pretty low. The likelihood of you being drugged by a date, whether you're a female or a male, um, we've heard about it from males a lot because there's a lot of whoremongers that come here and they get drugged by the prostitutes on the street. Then there are also the cases where they're not whoremongering, but they're on a dating app, and these groups of delinquents have a woman on their team that has her Tinder profile, makes the date, sets it up, drugs the guy, and then they clean out his apartment, clean him out, and sometimes he will overdose and die. That has been kind of a trending topic because we've seen it more now than ever, and it'll probably continue to happen because it's a drug that makes you basically unconscious, but you're conscious. To some people, you might even look like the same AK that's sitting here. Yet, if someone tells you to do something, you'll go do it. In some countries, they call it the zombie drug because it turns you kind of into a zombie where you're controlled by whoever is telling you to do so. The most uh, common thing right now is that guys getting drugged by their date and then being cleaned out, property stolen from their hotel rooms or Airbnbs, and on top of that, the Airbnb getting cleaned out, like the TVs being taken, because some of these Airbnbs don't have a security guard and some of them that do have a security guard, those robbers will pay the security guard to let them go in and out and do whatever they need to do. And they just turn a blind eye. And in the camera, the person's talking to the security, security guard. guard in the camera while he's in a drunken state or in the uh, scopolamine induced state. And the next day, the security guard said, you told me that they were your friends and they were your family or they... That, that it was okay that they were taking stuff out because you're moving. These are reported cases that I know personally of friends that have had this happen to them. The probability that's going to happen to you, it's is probably low. The percentage of it happening to anybody, you, me, them, is very low. But we have friends that are entrepreneurs, business guys here, have nothing to do with prostitution. They just went out on a date with a girl. The only mistake they made was trying to get to... Is it third base? Home home base? Too easily? Uh, too fast? And they're just like, yeah, I'm such a big stud. Let's go. All the girls love me. And they bring them straight back to their house and then they're drugged. So you don't necessarily have to be like a whoremonger or a bad person no. to fall victim to this. You just need to understand a few things. And we're going to touch on that now. Now that we've covered all the bad things that happen, how do we avoid this? First of all, don't take any drink that someone gives you. And second of all, be aware of the culture, culture and how dating progresses here. It's not that common that she's having one drink and let's go and back to your place. Right. So if that happens to you, and maybe you're not the most Brad Pitt Casanova back home, and immediately this is happening to you for some reason, think again, be logical. Is this too good to be true? If it's too good to be true, usually it is, right? The same thing applies to everything in Colombia, especially women. If it's too good to be true question it at the very least. If you're on dating apps, you want to learn enough about the culture and lifestyle of locals to know when a girl is a hood girl that could be involved in a gang trying to make a quick buck. And I'm not saying that all hood girls are bad. And I like- But most of the bad girls are hood girls. And I like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, true, true. So how do you tell a hood girl from someone that's probably got some education, got a job, use your common sense. If their profile only has pictures of them half naked, naked <laughs> they're probably not the type of person that you want to go out with if you're looking for something serious. On top of no, that. Or if you're looking to not get drugged and robbed. Because yeah. I would say the percentage of guys getting done, like you look at a dating app, oh, this girl's five photos all looks like a prostitute in all of them. This is going to be good. Let's meet up with her and bring her straight back to my or, house. Yeah, let's see what happens. Yeah, let's see what happens. Girls back home like that are dressed like this don't ever hit, hit me up. <laughs> They'll hit you up yeah. here if you like them. If you're a foreigner and ev evidently, apparently a foreigner, you're going to do very well in Colombia on dating. any dating app. Yep. That being said, you're going to get some good girls and you're going to get some bad girls. So you have to be able to distinguish the good girls and the bad girls. Sometimes you're not going to be able to tell until you actually talk to them. The Medellin Masterclass, 10 hours exclusive content that will help you decipher a lot of these things that we have talked about today in detail, depending on your needs. But you're not only getting 10 hours worth of content, you're also getting access to our community full of people that just like you want to live in Medellin or are living in Medellin. There's a community for you here and it's all positive 
creating this amazing life that we've already created here for ourselves. We only take a limited amount of people into this class because it's very intense and it's very personal. Fill out the form by clicking the link below. We'll evaluate, set up a call, and we'll see if we can work together. Enjoy our content. Make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and we'll see you guys in Medellin. Going back to the picture thing. If they're taking a selfie and there is brick in the background, no drywall, that could be a sign of a hood girl. If there are loose wires, that could be a sign of a hood girl. If there's a baby and she's in lingerie, that could be a hood girl. If the photo looks like it was taken by a Nokia 6120, that could be a hood girl. If it's a selfie in a mirror and there is a dollar bill in the case, that could be a hood girl. If she uses emojis in the picture of little love hearts and little crazy little things like that, could be a, could hood, be girl. a hood girl. Yeah, if one of those emojis is a little devil, she could be a hood girl. If she hits you up immediately with words like amor, which means my love, and is very flirty immediately, that That's could be a hood girl. girl. Most women will never in any country, I think, refer to you as their love upon meeting you. It's like the equivalent of if you're on a dating app in the United States and some girl goes, hey, sugar. <laughs> More is that same cringy yeah. word that people say here to each other sometimes. If she tries to move things too quickly towards a point of meeting up in a private place. Could be a hood girl. It could be a hood girl. So there's little things you pick up like this, but everything, man, comes back to you guys need to understand, is it too good to be true? Why is this girl interested in me? Maybe I didn't have a lot of luck dating back home, but suddenly there's 30 girls trying to meet up with me in my apartment. I cannot have turned into Brad Pitt, Bradley Cooper overnight. What is happening? Right. And usually it's something not good. At the very least, just avoid it. Mm -hmm. Just avoid it. It's better to regret that you didn't score or that you didn't make out with a girl than to regret a two week hangover and all of your possessions lost. Some of you guys are very adventurous and you'll say, you know, whatever, I'm going to give it a crack. At least try and meet up with these girls in a private place. Go to Provenza on a Saturday night or something, Friday night, meet in a very packed place with security and things like that. And just drink your own drink and just see where it goes from there. Don't move it towards your house or something, but just... Yeah, see where it goes from the there. the best advice I can give to you guys at home who just like, Let's see what happens. You've lived many years here. You've dated many girls. How many do you think? 13 years, probably over 100, yeah. 100. Yeah. And any time you've had any issue? No, I'll be honest. I don't even remember a time where a woman asked me for money oh. because that's normal yeah. in Colombian culture too. It's like they ask you for things or they insinuate that they need help with something. But I think it goes towards the per type of person that you're attracted to and that you attract. If she's really hot yet, I have to take care of her and do everything. I don't like that. I don't want that in my life. I want someone that is a better challenge than that. Yeah, it's just a matter of you being aware of what's out there and what could happen to you if you let your guard down too much. You can let your guard down sometimes. I mean, shit, I go out and get drunk and have fun and dance and I've had one night stands here and bring home a girl and I was like, damn, that moved fast. But it wasn't a girl off the street and it wasn't a girl that I met in a barrio on a dating app. 